Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to talk about how to use a t-distribution table to read values off a table and basically look up values in a t-distribution to solve problems. And we'll get to the exact problem types that we're going to get to later, but before we can do these confidence interval problems, I need to make sure you understand what a t-distribution table is and how to read it. Because just like with any other topic in statistics, 99% of the battle is really just understanding very simple concepts. And if you're not able to open a book and learn how to use the table properly, then you can't solve anything, even if the problems are very simple. So what I need to do is teach you how to use this table. It is a little different than using a normal distribution table, but it's not hard. All right, so first, let me show you how to use the t-distribution table. So in order to do that, let me draw a quick t-distribution and kind of draw something for you here. So the first thing I'm gonna draw is the distribution. Uh, and remember, it looks bell-shaped, so it's gonna look like a normal distribution, but just rest assured that the actual shape of it is slightly different than a normal distribution, unless the sample size is very, very large because the degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So if I get to very large sample sizes, then this t distribution does approach and approximate a normal distribution. All right, so it looks like a normal distribution here, but just kind of keep in mind that the exact shape of it is going to depend upon the degrees of freedom, which is dependent upon the sample size that you're taking, you know, you're surveying or whatever it is you're doing. All right, so when you look this guy up in the back of the book, every statistics book is going to have a table for a t-distribution or maybe called a student t-distribution. And almost every student t-distribution chart is going to be set up like this, like the following. There, you need to envision this sort of bell-shaped curve here and draw a dotted line down here and then shade everything to the right. Shade everything to the right. All right. This area to the right is called alpha. That is the area. You just kind of need to kind of get it in your head that this area here is denoted alpha. And the corresponding line up to which the area is measured is called T sub alpha. The reason it's called T sub alpha is because this is a T distribution. So remember when we were doing a normal distribution, we said you need a Z score, right? So you can go and look it up. And, and the horizontal axis was really the Z reading. And you were really looking and calculating areas under that distribution. Um, that's what you do when you uh, handle a normal distribution. In a T distribution, the horizontal axis is T because that's what that's what it's called, a T distribution. It's just another name for a variable uh, there. You can't call it Z because that's already taken with a normal distribution. That would lead to lots of confusion. So we call this T because it's a T distribution. It's called T sub alpha because this is the value of T that gives an area of alpha to the right. It's very important that you know that the area 